Thank you, Shadi. Uh, there's people in the back standing. There's still seats in the front. Anyone wants to grab them? We're good? All right. So thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Startup Grind. Startup Grind is a worldwide initiative to encourage and empower entrepreneurs. So we bring different speakers throughout every month, every month to inspire you in different ways. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Thank you, Peter. All right, so um, just get started. Going back to the beginning, uh, what contributed to you being the person that you are today? Was it your upbringing, your education, uh, different values that kind of led you to be the person that you are today? No, I'm not sure. It's only a matter of luck. But <laughs> well, uh, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming. I'm very glad to see uh, all of you here. And um, uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Shadi, for hosting me. It's an honor to. Uh, 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 to, to talk to these young entrepreneurs. I'm, be, I'm really happy to be among you here today. And uh, 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 you know, I feel very old when I see all these young faces, except Dr. Yahya, of course. He's older than me, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. Well, uh, uh, what actually helped me uh, to be who I am now, when I grew up, I grew up in a business environment. My dad used to have an old shop in the old city of Nervous, selling Kunafa, Nafta al you know? And uh, I had to work all summer long, and sometimes during holidays, and, and uh, uh, even during school days when it's high season, to go and help him out. So I learned that business is good, and being on your own uh, is not bad, and uh, you can do your own business someday. And uh, I learned a lot being in the old city of Nervous, listening to all gossip, you know, from older people like, uh, uh, from much older people than me, uh, you learn a lot more than you should in everything. And that's helped, uh, 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 you know, creating the business thinking uh, 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 in my childhood. However, like anyone else, during our age, you know, during our childhood, if you don't go to be a doctor or engineer, you are a failure story. And that was, you know, what everybody expected from me personally. Uh, I had an 86% almost in my uh, high school, which is a, was a big failure in, 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 in the eyes of my family, because uh, all my sisters and, and the brothers, mostly engineers and doctors and pharmacists, so I was the, the, the only failure uh, member of the family. And uh, I had to go and study science. But, Initially, I, I majored in biology my freshman year, and I ended up, you know, you know, cutting frogs and, and uh, doing different things in the lab. I said, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. With all respect to all scientists, you know, this is something they like. Uh, and uh, I was back then in Jordan, going to a Jordan University because my uh, my family decided that. Uh, they wanted uh, me to get out of the country because uh, during our age, uh, in the 1980s, everyone has to be involved in politics. One way or the other. You don't know how you end up you know, getting involved, but you end up involved in something. And uh, uh, not a single person, I think, in my school, except even was arrested, except uh, even if for a few hours, because you go almost outside of the city, you take the bus, Kadir Tukan, uh, Mahzouz, Masri School, all these schools that are outside of the snap of Nablus. When you go on in the afternoon, some kid will end up yelling at, at uh, the Israeli army and they end up taking the whole bus to prison, at least for half a day. And we'll be, you will get yelled at, swelled at, kicked out, you know, kicked uh, in the butt, you know, get all kinds of things, and we ended up getting involved in politics, one, one way or the other. Whether you are in that direction, or in that movement, or in that way of thinking, everybody is involved. And the challenge is, during high school, not to be arrested during the exam of math or physics, so, so you get to flood the youth. And that, that was a big challenge to go through Tawjihi or high school without being arrested so you don't flunk that year. That was the, the, the environment in the 1980s. Not only Omar, everybody got you know, exposed to this kind of environment. So I learned to, 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 to read the newspaper since I was in my second grade, every single day. If I miss the newspaper, I know you don't read the newspapers and you only read Facebook and websites, but we are from older age, you know. So if you don't read the newspaper, you don't know anything. And most of my information that I got, to be honest, 
I got it from reading the newspaper every single day. Until now, my problem with the senior management, when they're not informed, I tell them the meeting, you don't read the newspaper. And uh, the funny thing, in one of my birthday occasions, they wrote, brought me a gift, my picture, yelling at them with my birthday, and said, you don't read the newspaper? Learn to read it. And that uh, 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 was uh, uh, the environment I grew up. Uh, I, I went back to visit university because uh, I tried to change my major in Jordan, didn't work. So I had to go and restart my education in BZ. Two years studying business and accounting. That's something I really liked. You know, I didn't finish my story in Jordan. I was just coming through an accounting and business book to one of my roommates, and I really liked it. I said, wow, this is interesting. You know, you actually learn uh, uh, something here. Uh, so I went back to BZ and restarted my education. Two years, the first and father started. No more colleges, no more schools. And I ended up waiting for three years without uh, getting any, any, any more education because everybody, during the first intifada, did not, uh, uh, most of uh, you know, the, 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 the students at all age, you know, did not go to college. They were closed. So if they were closed in your school, what were you doing? We were just watching what's happening in town, playing cards. Some of us, not me, were throwing rocks at the Israeli army, getting arrested, you know, some, some other people. And uh, here I am, after five years from finishing high school, I'm a big failure again. Because everybody has graduated who went to study abroad, or maybe uh, uh, some of the kids, and I haven't finished even two years out of my college. I finished my high school in 1984. It's 1989, I'm still, I barely finished 60 credit hours. So uh, uh, at that time, you know, I was preparing during that, that, that period to, to, to go to the U.S. I got accepted more than once, but, uh, and I did my TOEFL, I transferred my credit, but my dad was getting my older brother to get married, so I had to wait until he finished the whole arrangement because he couldn't finance both of us at the, at the same time. And then when I was ready, all the people from Nablus were blocked from traveling at that time for reasons has to do with the first intifada. So, uh, 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 most of you don't know, in 1980s, we were not allowed to travel if you are younger than 36 years old. Unless you have a visa, working visa somewhere, or acceptance letter from university. Otherwise, you have to go and spend nine months out of the country. You cannot go to Amman just for one night and come back. And during the 1980s, up until Oslo Agreement, you couldn't put that as an person. You will have to go for at least nine months to go and spend outside of the country if you are planning to leave. And even if you, you know, decided to go and leave, Jordan will not let you do this. So they send you back, unless you have, if you have a visa and an acceptance letter. That was, you know, that worked to my advantage because when I went to the US, the first two months, they were, you know, really hard. You know, getting uh, somewhere in uh, northwestern Pennsylvania where you don't know anyone. It's really cold. It starts snowing in, in September, and every single weekend we had a snow, and we just thought, uh, how the hell I ended up here? You know, I don't know. But and I, so they were like the two months. The first two months, I haven't eaten much because you go into the cafeteria, you smell the food, you don't like it. I ended up taking medication so I can eat. I wish I can lose some weight now, but you know, at that time it was easy to lose weight. And the, 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 the other thing is that the nine months rule worked out really well, because if it was not up to that rule, I probably would have come back and couldn't you know, stay there. So I stayed there and then uh, uh, I finished my degree in accounting and, and, and business at that time. And uh, it was a good experience because, uh, uh, you know, uh, that was a change mood for me because I wanted to really to finish my degree. I said five years with no degree, nothing, you know, uh, hanging on the wall. It's really embarrassing because you have to have to hang something on the wall, otherwise you are a failure. And uh, uh, I graduated in December ninety, officially May ninety one, because I had get some, some courses in complete, so I extend my stay and then get another practical uh, You know, visa students do these kind of things in the U.S. to get uh, longer stay. 
uh, after that, I went and uh, uh, I was looking for a summer job in California. I visited some of uh, so a few friends of mine and just worked in the restaurants and the other things. I ended up getting a full time job in one of the Middle Eastern uh, 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 companies, and I changed my visa status from F1 to H1, which was a great move for me. Then my parents started crying. This guy stayed there. He's not. He's not coming back at all. What kind of uh, job was this? It was an accounting job, which I learned really a lot on it. Because back then in 1991, not a lot of people knew computer in accounting or finance. When I learned Excel on DOS, it used to be one sheet, no 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 Windows, uh, no no mouse, nothing. It's all DOS, and you have to 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 learn all all, all the commands. I still uh, uh, work perfect. Again, you know, you guys live in the golden age, but uh, older people like us, you have to press Shift Alt Seven Alt or Alt uh, F4 for spell check. I still remember them because you used to them uh, to, uh, to to use them a lot. But everything was DOS environment, and it was really hard to, to deal with computer. It's it was not that easy. And uh, uh, then uh, uh, my parents got really angry because they thought I'm going to stay in this, the US for the rest of all of my life, which I was planning on doing anyway. It's really nice to to be there. Uh, so what brought you back? So what brought you back? Uh, 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 the pressure of, of the family uh, 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 pushed a little bit for me to go and did my master's to do my master's degree and graduate school. Plus, uh, some problems at work, working in, in many apps in the U.S. at the same time in a Middle Eastern company is not something easy, you know, to a different environment. So I thought, you know what, college life is not that bad. And my friends, you know, moved from Pennsylvania to, to Kent State, Ohio, and so they started nagging. Come back, man, you know, still it's too early for you to work. said, you know what, yeah, college life is not bad. Let him go back to work, to, 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 to study. And it is an excuse to do my master's and make my parents happy and enjoy my life again. Why not? So I, did, I went back and did my master's. And I finished my master's in, uh, in my day uh, and do well. So I did my immigration to Canada one day, stayed for a while, and uh, eventually I got my citizenship. And I got back based on my pressure from my parents. My dad insisted that I can come back. And I actually, in 1989, when I left, he told me one thing, I'll give you all the support you can, and I'll do anything for you to finish your education, but you have to make one promise. I said, okay, it's easy, what, what do you want? I said, when I tell you to, when I ask you to come back, you come back. So, oh come on, my it's easy. Okay, I'll come back. Once you're there, it's really hard to come back. Life is tempting, and when I when I talk about life in 1980s and 90s in in, in, in Palestine, trust me, it was not easy. Thousands of graduates will graduate and they will don't have a job. They don't have even hope to have a job unless if you go to if they go to the Gulf. No government jobs. No companies, no private sector, no NGOs, nothing. Unless you are planning to be a teacher in the Ministry of Education, or if you're lucky to be hired by a uh, university. And to be honest, I did my master's as a backup plan, at least if I don't find a job in, 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 in Palestine, I'll just you know, go and try to get a job, teaching job in university. And that was you know, the, the ultimate dream that we can dream of. It's good to, to, to teach at, uh, at university, which is something I did on a part-time basis when I came back and taught at Najah, I taught at Bilzid, only part-time late in the afternoon. Is that what you did when you first came back, it was teaching? No, I did that on part-time. I worked at uh, 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 back then at the Christian Economic Council for reconstruction, build, build for reconstruction. It was almost everything in the Christian National Authority, and we, we paid the first set of salaries for education and health through that organization. A year later, and I was working with the World Bank on, on many projects, because it was the channel for, for, for the donor countries picked up at that time. Then I moved to Pedico for, for almost uh, uh, a little less than three years, and, uh, and I helped doing all the feasible studies and business proposal for different projects that you see today, the, 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 the poultry project, the, the, the different uh, projects that Pedico has done in the 90s. And uh, then uh, a friend of mine has convinced me to move to the UAE, which is something that, uh, I don't know, I'm on record. So, so I said, well, it was okay experience, but I didn't think that, you know, I, 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 I fit in the Gulf environment really easily. So I uh, made my decision from the first month that this is not 
for made for me or for my, for my kids. And if I want to live in a different country anyway, I either live in my own country in Palestine or go live in, in, in Canada or the US. Uh, while I uh, uh, was there, after 14 months, I got a phone call from my ex-boss that used to be uh, my boss in, in Pedico, and he was hired back then to be the CEO of Peltel. I said, Amal, I know that uh, uh, you like being in the UAE, uh, but I'd like to come back and work for me. I said, where at? He said, at Peltel. I said, Peltel, no way, man. You know, what, what do you talk about? Peltel, you know, said, uh, I said, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm now the CEO of Peltel, and I'd like to have a good team around me, especially in finance. Uh, we need to have people in finance to help me out. And back then, they, they, they had certain problems in their financial statements and the exchange rate. It, it was, you know, it, it just came up all of a sudden, and nobody accounted for it. I said, I need you to work with me, and, uh, you know, well, if you can, you know, after like a month of talking, I came back and I started as a mid-level employee in finance department, financial controller with like two or three people above me under the CFO and then the CEO. What convinced you to leave the UAE and come back to corporate health over? To, to, to be honest, I've seen cases in the Gulf where they spend all their life working there and then eventually they would have to leave and restart all over again in their own country. And it's different from being in the U.S. or Canada or Western country because at least there you have full residency, you have citizenship where you have the choice either to stay or to go back. In the Gulf, you don't have a choice. Once they terminate your employment, you have to leave the country within one month, even if, if your kids are in school. I decided this is not made for me. I cannot live a 20 years of my life where I'm not settled down. So I did, you know, I decided to take the offer and I'm happy I did after almost uh, 10 months or less than that in, 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 in the finance department in Peltel in Naples, which is uh, uh, only five minutes from my parents' house, uh, uh, I moved to Jawal in February 2000. So, so I've been with Peltel since April 1999, almost 16 years. So I should be fired soon, but I hope I can stay, stay longer. Uh, I started in the finance department in Jawal in February 2000. Then I, uh, as a financial controller, a year later when Jawal was, uh, had, uh, had become a separate company from Peltel, I became the CFO of Jawal up until 2005. 2005, I became the CEO of Jawal. 2010, I became the group CEO. Until now, you know, I have my job. So I look up the letter, see who's, you know, uh, uh, up there said, okay, but you next man, you know, I'm coming after you. And that's what was my study until I got to my chairman. Now I cannot touch him. And he's, he's, he's a lovely man. And uh, I adore him a lot because he's, uh, I, I, I can spend the next two hours talking about my, my chairman. And then the, the, the way he manages uh, uh, his business, he's one of the most successful business people. And I, I learn every day from him. Uh, how uh, to be a successful businessman. Uh, that was my, my, my short story. I don't want to stay uh, talk about my history, but again, the, 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 the business culture, the values you grow up, and one thing I learned, one thing I don't know if it's in your questions or not, but one thing I learned during my, my you know, uh, history as a leader, executive, whatever you call it, over the past few years, there's no right or wrong decision. There's no right or wrong decision. You make the decision based on your hunch, based on your feeling. You know, your team come and do presentations and figures, you know, and they try to convince you with that direction or that direction, and there's no right or wrong. But it's all about your hunch. You have to make a decision. And if it was all about, you know, figures and numbers, they, we don't need managers. We just only, we only need manuals. And you know, you know, read the manual and you make the decision. But it's not the case. You make decision based on your hunch. There's no right or wrong decision. And you always have to be prepared to be wrong. When, when you make a decision every day, what if I'm wrong? You have to be prepared for the wrong decision because many decisions you make on a daily basis are wrong ones. And you need to be ready to fix them. And your backup plan to fix those decisions is part of your right approach to, 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 to achieve whatever you want. Right. Speaking of decisions, I mean, running a company in Palestine is definitely not an easy uh, 
easy thing. Uh, what are some big challenges or obstacles that you faced in Pelto Group, and how? What kind of decisions did you have to make to uh, solve those obstacles uh, regarding uh, occupation and? Well, the most challenging thing in working at Pelto that you're working in a very sensitive industry. It's telecom. And I'm sure you know these days that telecom is very sensitive to security, privacy, everything in your life. And now we know why Israel has put so many restrictions on the telecom industry in Palestine. Because they need to control, they need to access the information, the access to information, they need to, to know everything. And that's why they put all these restrictions on telecom companies. Unfortunately, we have to suffer, and our customers and you guys have to suffer, otherwise you'll be enjoying the most advanced technology in the world, and the only reason that we're not enjoying it and we cannot offer it to you is Israel. Uh, we have the license for 3G, and so uh, has Watania also, the, the, they have the license for 3G. We paid for it since 2010. We have the license for 3G from the Palestinian Authority as of 2010. And until now, which is almost 2015, uh, uh, we still don't have it because Israel is not releasing the spectrum. I, am, I was in one of those meetings in, in, um, in London with investment bankers where we tried to convince them to come and invest in Palestine and invest in your company with many public companies. And we had it on our business plan and our presentation. We had the 3G in 2014. That was back in 2010. And one bank asked me, well, oh, come on, man, let's talk, you know, 3G in 2014. So said, well, we live in Palestine. I said, yeah, yeah, but, but 3G in 2014, you know, you are a CEO of a telecom company. Come on, you know, you're not willing to make the investment. You, you know, you should pursue the license. I said, listen, we have the license. We pay for it. We're ready to make the investment, but we don't have it. I said, why? And I had to explain to him the story. And, you know, they did not expect that in, by 2014, we still don't have 3G. So why is it? Why are they doing it? Israel was not releasing the spectrum because uh, everything is related to the political process in Palestine. They want to have the 3G with access and movement, with the settlement issue, with Jerusalem issue, with refugees issue, which is something we don't think it's fair to the Palestinians, not fair to, 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 to us as companies, not fair to young generation that using you know uh, uh, their mobile, uh, 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 the, the servers of the SMEs and banks and different institutions in state-of-the-art data center where it will be classified international T1, T2, T3, you know, the classification of different data centers in the world. And hopefully we'll be able to give us the state-of-the-art services. So far, the hosting is done through the ISPs, and we're not as the big operators, Palkin, Ojoa, are staying out of it and living to Hada is competing with Colio, with, with uh, 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 Mada, and those people for, for the hosting. But once we have uh, 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 a big data center, I think we can present the product in a different way. So we can give you the hosting services with this disaster recovery, or maybe with running your IT services, with all these kind of ideas. That hopefully will, will, will become a big. Uh, solution and alternative for you and much cheaper than hosting your website in the US. I hope so, but you know, it, it is as an uh, international practice uh, that interconnection and the hosting is uh, cost-based. Not uh, It is not something that uh, companies try to uh, get profit uh, from it. Uh, you know, uh, the market is from the access to the services. So you interconnect? We're not, we're not in, in this, we're not planning to make our money from the hosting services. I hope so. The, 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 the money is made through connectivity. I mean, when I, when I come and host the service of, of a bank in, in, in my data center, which is very hard to convince the banks in Palestine to do it, because they don't trust anyone with their information, but I'm hoping to make money within the connectivity. When I sell them the, the bandwidth and uh, uh, different telecom solutions with that bundle, I'm hoping to make my money through that thing. I'm not talking about the bank, I'm talking about uh, small startups. No, no, no. Uh, as well, a mainly like SMEs, uh, hopefully, will be able to justify the business case. You don't want to have an IT department in every single uh, business in Palestine. Small businesses, they cannot afford it, but they need to, to, to have a small server for uh, 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 
uh, their uh, different system. However, again, there is a fine line. We don't want to keep to compete with small IT companies. We had an IT company, Halul, that was supposed to, to do quote unquote miracles in IT. However, we decided to minimize the scope of the business for that company in order not to compete with the existing IT companies in Palestine. So there is always a fine line of being a big operator that is trying to save the country and try, on the other hand not to kill the smaller businesses. So I would like to see the smaller IT companies growing and, and succeeding in, in Palestine. I do, we don't want us as Palter to be the reason for uh, getting them out of business. So it, it has uh, all of it, it has to work well within the different scheme. Um, so we have a question. How many startups are here? Want to raise your hands? So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine startups. So you guys should reach out to Palto Group. There's ten. Um, so if you have any questions, I believe you'll be around for another few minutes. Um, approach, talk, network. Network also with your peers, get to know each other. But um, I would like to thank you for being our speaker. Uh, we do have a little gift for you. It's an olive wood startup grind pop. And we're ready to do more. And we're ready to redirect our budgets if we need to. However, we need to see ideas, we need to see uh, 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 business models that work. And uh, uh, we're ready to give you a chance because uh, I'm sure that uh, you will not be able to determine if your idea will be uh, a Google type or Waze type or you know all these uh, successful ideas or maybe only uh, uh, a trial and error thing that would not work eventually. Are you ready to invest in startups right now? Again, if, if the idea is feasible and makes sense, yes. Right. Um, I know international, a lot of companies what they'll do is they'll focus on startups that are solving a problem in their own industry. Um, and what are some challenges that Palatel Group faces that you can tell these, this group of people they can work on, maybe be acquired by Palatel Group? Uh, to be acquired, it's something that uh, needs careful evaluation because at some point of time we were in a mood at, of acquiring everything in the country. I'm not saying oh, you know, uh, two years back, five years back, at least ten years back, we were in the mood of acquiring every single successful idea in the country, which is fine, you know, uh, 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 at each time, you know, the uh, different uh, periods will, will, will require a different uh, uh, way of thinking. However, uh, 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 to acquire a business, we need to, to feel that there is a big value in it, I, and I hope we can find one, but uh, however, we can co-invest with you guys. We don't have to acquire your business and push you out of business. Or, or the, uh, 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 transform you to a minority shareholder. We have, or we have the majority shareholder. No, we can have 10 or 15 or 20 percent and put some capital just to help you out, make it through. So, for me, one of the ideas just go where uh, you can see from the successful uh, uh, startup ideas. In, in the world, and you don't have to create a new idea, just go and localize it, analyze it, do something that worked somehow in the US, and it's only English, and you think it, 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 it worked in the Arab world, do it, analyze it, uh, uh, localize it, uh, 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 and it might be successful. You don't have to compete with the giants in the US. Just go look. Uh, take an example, not uh, for, for for one single idea. Most of you look at the news websites, and they they, they local news websites, and they actually successful. They make money, and they get advertising, and they support their, their salaries, and they make profit. And I know they do make profit, many of them. And most of us look at uh, at those local websites. I don't want to mention anyone, so you don't consider that I'm promoting certain certain websites. But they make money, but 
If I ask many of you how many of you look at international websites for news, most of you look for the local news websites. They don't look for CNN or BBC or uh, uh, Bloomberg or unless you specialize in, in, in certain things. But most of us look at the local websites or at least advice websites. Because you know, any news you need to, the, the news that 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 that, 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 that relates to you. And the same thing in many of the services. If you go in the medical services, if you go in, 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 in uh, location-based services, different things might help if you look at the right idea and uh, localization and local, localization is a key success for many uh, 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 of, of uh, the startup. Uh, uh, um. I'm sure you all heard of uh, uh, Maktoub, you know, and the way, you know, how it was uh, sold to Yahoo and other things. You know, localization, localization is something I can think of when, 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 when you say about uh, 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 what to look for. So focusing on the telecom uh, industry in the Middle East, what are some challenges that entrepreneurs can kind of work on solving? The telecom industry is changing everywhere in the world. Uh, historically, we were depending on our revenue streams on access services. But this is changing. You know, uh, 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 year, after year after year, the, the dependence on access as a revenue stream will be minimized. And we'll be looking at telecom operators on services. You know, on, on uh, something like the cloud services, something like products, something like the apps, and to, to make money from the apps. You know, uh, 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 the, the, the monthly fees for access in DSL or 3G or Siemens or Gigabytes or you know whatever you can call it are minimized. We used to, you know, 10 years ago we used to charge you, uh, uh, I don't know, like one shekel per, per minute for calls to Jordan. Now we, 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 we have it almost free and nobody use, uses it. And everybody talks about, you know, of uh, Viber and Skype and, and uh, uh, do it for a fee. Why should they pay for it? And that's, that's their right. Uh, we as Belton never thought of closing the, the, the service or blocking the service like you know, some countries in the Gulf do. Because if we think this way, we probably block the email in the 90s. And we decide, you know, email is, is a threat to us and we should block it. Imagine if we think that way. We think that the service is changing, and we should adapt to the changes in the industry. We should uh, grow with it and change with it. We cannot block it and, and uh, 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 go in the wrong direction. So, with the change in telecom industry, services and new ideas are the main revenue stream. Come up with an app, for example, that makes some money, you can partner with me and we'll share revenues. You get X percent, I get X percent. Now, what is this app? I cannot tell you, you have to tell me. I'm opening the platform, opening my network to you. However, come up with the idea and you know, uh, uh, so you can make money on it, I can make money, uh, uh, money on it. There are some ideas, and, and to be honest, uh, that is going in, 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 in the Palestinian startup, the startup environment. And many of them are coming from uh, uh, Arabs who, who live in, 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 in Israel, which is good, but they're coming to, to, to be fostered here in Ramallah because they want to grow and, uh, and be known as, a, as Palestinian startups and companies and not from the other side. But you, you can see the difference sometimes from the way of thinking from the Arab Israelis and, 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 and uh, 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 the local Palestinians here because they were brought up in different environments, different ecosystems. So we might take advantage of this, since our brothers and sisters uh, who, who, who live next to us, uh, they, they, they come to us and then they would like to partner with us and they have ideas. And I've seen a few of them and they went into the urbanization, localization, and I think that some of them that I have seen will be very successful one. And we are working on them to, 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 part, to part partner with them and to open channels for them with the operators in, in the Middle East and the Arab world as Palestinian companies. And they're all Palestinians. We're not being covered up for Israeli companies. This is something that go against our values. And if you wanted to do it, with have done it long time ago and makes millions. I will not go to the Arab world and market my service as a cover up for Israeli company. No, this will never happen. But when some startup here in Ramallah, a pure Palestinian, 
they want to go and market their service and they are well, yes, I go. And if, if, if their experience is successful with one of our companies, Balpil, Jawal, Hadar, any of these companies, we go and take the idea and promote it with say, Ibtisalat, STC, all these companies. Because if, if the concept is proved to you, it can be uh, uh, easily uh, transferred to the rest of the world. And uh, uh, we have the connections. We know most of the people there. And we can help those people uh, uh, grow their ideas in the world. So if people here have ideas, um, how can they get a hold of an Apple group and share those ideas? Uh, I think you all know Nada, Marwan, Samah, you know all these uh, uh, ladies who work here. And Nada is almost here permanent. She's, she's here everywhere. Yeah. And she, she, she wanted to take advantage of me uh, uh, and put me on the stand here, ask all the questions about, you know, why we, we're not uh, paying good salaries and raising, uh, you know, the bonuses every year again. But, you know, Peter wouldn't let him do that, so he, he sat in her place, luckily. But Nada is, 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 is the right address. Samah is also the right address. I can see uh, Hameen. They, they, they all. Uh, 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 I like this for, for, for uh, the ideas, they can come up, uh, uh, come to any of them, present their ideas, and we'll ask you to come and present, and you, you meet some kind of mini investment committee from the finance department, market department, and they will challenge you with the numbers. And don't be upset if, if you don't accept your idea. You know, it's, 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 uh, that's part of what, what the challenge, you know. you either doing something wrong, or we are doing something wrong. And you know, uh, many investors, uh, you know, missed on many opportunities in their life. I'm sure you know, when when uh, someone presented Google idea to investors, you know, the beginning, uh, they thought uh, uh, he's crazy. Uh, uh, the idea of Phoenix, I'm sure you you, you learned all of uh, this in business school. Uh, what's his name? Forgot what his name. But you know, when he put his his idea in MBA class, he got a D. And the, his professor, you know, thought that it would never work. And now it's 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 a, it's a big journey in the world. FedEx is a big company, and the, the idea actually worked overnight. Mail work, but you know, the professor in in what double the business schools thought, you know, it would never work. And he gave uh, the guy a D. Said, get lost, it will never work. And uh, I'm sure many ideas that you see successful today, when they were initially presented. Uh, 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 some people thought it won't work. So if, if you like your idea, we'll, 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 be par we'll partner with you. If you don't, we hope that we will get it one day. And you'll be successful in it, and we'll get it. It will be our pleasure, because at least if that happens, we will have a success story in Palestine that we should all be part of it. Great. Thank you. So now we're going to open up questions to the audience. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. Thank you, and thank you, Omar, for the great presentation. Uh, you talked about you'd be proud of having success stories from Palestine, and uh, that's great, everyone will be proud of. Uh, I think uh, you're looking for success stories. But before that, I think you also need, as part of the group, to help companies or startup companies to be part of these success stories, because they might not be able to do it themselves alone. So it's good that you help them in different ways. It's not only uh, access to finance, but connections, marketing, a uh, lot of uh, you know, uh, channels you can provide to have a success story. So I think maybe you shouldn't wait to have a success story, be part and help those companies to have success story. That will be part of uh, formate, formulating our strategy for dealing with entrepreneurship in Palestine that we hope to finish hopefully within the next two months. That includes whether or not we'll go for, for the entrepreneurship center that I'm dreaming of. You know, the, the team might have said, uh, you know, get lost, you know, you being, uh, uh, you, you, you are fascinated, fascinated about something that will not work in, 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 in today's world. You know, you, 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 you do all for this little thing on our own and uh, you don't interfere. One of the things, like I said, whatever needed from us, will be channeled through the setup that we'll announce and hopefully will channel people uh, who have ideas uh, through Paltel as a main operator in Palestine 
Zenin Jordan, Omnia, uh, Orange, or SDC in Saudi, all these operators that we have the connection with, we can help. However, hopefully within the next two months, we'll have a clear strategy that is uh, uh, published to everyone with the proper channels and the proper addresses and the proper mechanisms that are announced for people like you or the others where they can come and say, listen up, you don't want to invest with me? Okay, but I need your help in making a connection with uh, Zen in Jordan. So, okay, we'll have the connection, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll send an email, copy you, and we'll make the connection. We can do that for you. Uh, but we don't have to invest with you if you're not convinced. But if you can convince someone else, I'm happy. And if you, if, if, if you become successful, I'm also happy for you. Uh, and I'll probably regret it that uh, I'll let you down. But you manage to. So we do whatever we need. And whatever you guys need from uh, uh, us to help out is through the connection in the entire world. And we tried in, in many things. We did boot camps with Oasis 500, with different uh, 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 organizations that we tried to get the experience of Jordan and other countries here in Palestine to try to help, you know, in, in different things. So since you guys are talking or thinking about your uh, strategy in terms of how to involve Palto in entrepreneurship and make it become an active part in future successes of Palestinian startups, this is not a question, it's more a couple of ideas. I have a bunch of ideas how you guys and many of the other major companies in Palestine can actually effectively be involved. But two uh, ideas that I think are worthwhile kind of throwing out there right now. The first thing I think, and I've been saying that for, um, for a very long time, I don't think that today the entrepreneurship, the tech entrepreneurship ecosystem is in shortage of capital. I think capital is available for, for the right ideas and the right teams. The more important um, part that I think will be helpful to startups is getting people who have experience and can add value to engage in mentorship um, and guidance and um, you know supporting the teams on, on, on the ground. So one way to actually do that is to think at the top level how you guys, Peltel, or other companies, major companies in, in Palestine can incentivize um, their employees to take part, to take an active part um, in this entrepreneurship ecosystem. Whether by creating connections with potential entrepreneurs who need help from subject matter experts um, that are doing things along the same lines in your company or other companies, or whether it is by even going as far as potentially leaving a company like Peltel and coming to work for a startup, because ultimately I think that will become good for the startups, but it will also pay, pay dividends back to companies like Peltel and others. So that's one idea. The other idea, very quickly, is, um, you know, there are a lot of efforts that are happening today at the bottom or at the base of the pyramid in terms of acceleration and pre-acceleration uh, programs. And I think very soon, as these efforts become more uh, robust and start producing results, very soon we're going to hit a more substantial bottleneck, which is what happens to companies that succeed to get to Series A and maybe even Series B and are about to hit an inflection point in terms of growth. Um, how can we catalyze that growth? And I think for those types of companies, it's very important to um, have plugins into uh, the ecosystem of major companies, not necessarily just to kind of have you guys come in and potentially invest or take that product and deploy it into your networks, uh, but I think more importantly to kind of guide these companies to make them more aware of how does Paltel function internally. How can they uh, plug into that ecosystem and navigate the, ecos the, the, the um, you know, kind of the environment inside of Paltel in order for them to be able to be more effective at their sales, at their uh, product development. So really kind of creating this bridge or this commercialization program for the um, early to mid-stage startups to kind of go
go to scale. And if they are successful at doing that for, with you guys, then I think the chances are for them to be more successful in the region are definitely uh, you know, higher. So, sorry for the long comment. No, 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 I couldn't agree with you more. But, I mean, it just... Uh... What you suggested uh, uh, is a great idea, and I think we'll, we'll take it into good consideration. Uh, uh, I think uh, employee employees and, and the team we have, you know, they can contribute more or much more than what they are doing now, and uh, we should get them more involved with the uh, uh, young entrepreneurs that uh, we have everywhere. And they should play a much bigger role than what we are doing now. It's uh, it's not a matter of money, I agree. I mean, uh, 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 there is no shortage of capital when it comes to, to, to startups and entrepreneurs. You know, uh, uh, there is more one than fund that is ready to, to invest once the right idea is there. But getting everyone involved and supporting the, 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 the entrepreneurs and the, the ecosystem and entrepreneurship here in, in Palestine and our employees can add a lot to this actually because they've been exposed, they, they've seen technologies, they, they, they've gone to different uh, parts of the world where, where they can uh, see uh, 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 things that others may not be able to see, so we can use this uh, experience and this know-how in uh, uh, helping our entrepreneurs going into the right direction. And then we'll include this in, 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 in our uh, strategy in foster, fostering the entrepreneurship here in Palestine. We should do more as individuals, like I said. It's uh, not only uh, Amar or X or Y coming and give lectures because we don't know what you guys know. I mean, it's your field, it's your business, it's it's your dream. We only here to try to help, and we have to listen to you to 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 to, to be more effective. So thank you for for your uh, notes. Okay. Maybe uh, Sadara and Pavel group should partner up. Any more questions? Thank <laughs> you. أم بدي أسأل أنا بخصوص موضوع احتضان الشركات الستارت أبس في في جوال أو في بالتل بشكل عام هلا أنا طبعا اشتغلت أو كان في عندي بزنس بلانز بالانتربرنورشيب كان في أول إشي كنت نشتغل بالجامعة هلا جو الجامعة جو أكاديمي أكثر وهم يعني الجامعة بتتوقع منك إنك how much you are academic وكيف أنت عند اللي عندك لترشر شغلة زي هيك برضو الـ NGOs اشتغلت entrepreneurship business plan عندهم هلا الـ NGOs their heads are in clouds يعني <تصفيق> بيسووا لك انه يعني انت رح تنجح وهيك او يعني احنا هون يعني مثلا انك بدك تعمل موبايل ابليكيشن رح ينباع ثاني يوم هيك الـ NGOs بيصوروا لك فاحنا بدنا نشتغل داخل جو شركة زي كيف حضرتك انت يعني بتحكي لنا انك أم يعني خلينا نحكي عشت في جو بزنس بأول حياتك فهذا ساعدك كثير للوصول للمركز هذا برضو إحنا كإنتربرونورز بدنا بدنا كنت بيع كنافية بالضبط آه بس برضو يعني هذا بالثمانينات هلا صار في عنا شركات كبيرة بدنا إنه إحنا نعيش في بيئة في في بيئة الريال بزنس اللي بحكي لك فكرتك كويسة طبعا ما تتوقعش انها رح تنجح دايركتلي بعطيك كل الاشياء النيجاتيف اللي فيها ففي كمان شغله بخصوص الافكار الجديده هلا ممكن انا ما يكونش في عندي افكار جديده بس ممكن انك حضرتك تمثني بافكار من خلال انه شو المشكله اللي شو المشاكل اللي بتواجهها ثالث ممكن انك تطرح هاي المشاكل انا ممكن اقترح عليك حلول هاي الحلول ممكن انها تتم وتصير بزنس بلان وتصير شركة بالمستقبل بالإضافة إنه كمان في عليك تشالنج أنت اللي هو الشير هولدرز برضو هم مش يعني ما بيحبوش يضلهم طول عمرهم فقط أسهمهم في جوال بدهم يفتحوا شركات أخرى فبرضو هذا يعني لازم إنه تهتم في الأفكار اللي نعطيك إياها مشان ترضي الشير هولدرز يعني برضو لأنهم مهتمين إنهم يعني يستثمروا في بزنس جديد ف يعني انت ممكن انه تنفتح ابواب بالتل النا ونصير نشتغل عندكم بزنس بلانز وشغلات زي هيك شكرا شكرا لك انا بدي اجاوب بالانجليزي لانه ذاتس ذا فورمس انه لازم طلبوا مني مع انه انجليزي تي كلام بس يعني بال احنا وي هاد ذا اوبشن اوف 
building our own incubator. And if somebody follows up what's going, what's going on in some other markets, some of them are neighboring markets, specifically in Jordan, what's going on right now, every single operator, Zane is doing their own incubator, Orange is doing their own incubator, uh, 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 Omnia is going its own incubator with plug and play in, in, in the US. It's become, it became another uh, uh, competing arena for the telecom operators to compete for. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. And, you know, because on the other hand, you're basically killing all incubators in town. We have the power, we have the technology, we have the money. We at Peltel decided long time ago not to kill anyone in the country and not, not to, 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 to kill any ideas. <laughs> we competing with what we're not killing anyone. <laughs> so, what that's why we will partner with Picti or Pita, with leaders, with, with anyone, you know, all these, you know, uh, 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 accelerators, incubators, and try to take them to the next level. Or the other option is not to look at this and would like to capitalize on it. And I think we can get it. And you know, what you said in the university, every single university, oh, they, they almost have an incubator on campus. And the same thing, uh, uh, Peter or Picti, you know, leaders, everything, we want to partner with everyone, hoping that we, we will get somewhere. I know that there are shortcomings everywhere. No, nobody's perfect, including Peltel uh, uh, and others. But we, we will have to learn from other experience. My promise to you that will be more involved, that you'll see our employees more involved, that you'll get more access to Peltel premises and Peltel employees. That's what I can promise you. But I cannot promise you that we will stop our partnership or cooperation with everyone in the field because we decide to be on our own the same way it happened, for example, in Jordan or some other countries. I don't think, and, and, and to be honest, uh, we can do this, and we can use it for PR purposes. It's a big thing, and you know, Baltel uh, is doing this, and then Watania will do the different thing, and it will end up again another competition scheme that will not be to the benefit of the the the, 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 the uh, ecosystem of entrepreneurship itself. It will be another uh, advertising of uh, uh, competition arena that we compete with, and we show our muscles and no real output. The, the, the approach that we are taking so far, I think it's it's better for everyone. And if it does not work for some reason, we we'll look for another approach. But we will not take over the field from its owners. I mean, we are helpers, we're not owners. But we we and and, and uh, we'll help everyone, we'll force everyone, and we'll open our doors. But we don't want to isolate the others. It's not our strategy. If you find a very successful idea or a startup company, would you invest in it in person? I would. However, since I'm getting the company involved, if it has to be, first of all, the right of the company. Because we decided as Peltel to come and invest in the startup companies. My personal involvement will be a conflict of interest. Uh, I saw last week, I'm telling you an idea that I would love to invest personal in it because I know it will be a successful one. I can, I can see it. And I've seen, you know, the, 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 and I sent my team, and I know it will be a big one. And I wanted to invest in it, you know, my, my, on one side of my side, oh, go, go put some money in, and, you know, it's gonna be, you know, 10 times, 20 times in, 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 in less than a year or two years. But there's a big conflict of interest because I'm putting the company money. You know, suppose I'm taking like a thousand dollars for Peltel, and then I took a hundred dollars for myself. Well, I could have put the, 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 the 1100 or 1100 from Peltel, and Peltel will be making more money. So the, the idea of conflict of interest, and some, that's something I've decided from 
the first time I, I, I became a CEO for Peltaro, even Jawal, not to create any conflict of interest. And that's what I consider part of my success. If I take a decision, even internally, for the benefit of the employees, I don't benefit from it. For one day, I took a decision, to, even when I was CEO of Jawal, to give each employee four, five lines subsidized. I still, my wife went since I was here for when I didn't take the decision. The rest, my, my kids still be paid, they couldn't benefit from that program. Uh, I don't have any single line from that, from, from that, those subsidized lines because I give them to the employees and I should not benefit out of it. The conflict of interest in, 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 in my position is a fine line, I have to observe really well. So, I would invest, but I will always be hesitant if it conflicts with, with my work. If Pelton, for some certain reason, the investment committee decided not to invest, I'll go to my boss and listen up, you know, this was uh, presented, I think it's a good company, I'll leave it to you if you want to invest the mini investment and then at the birth level take the decision, but I would like to invest if you allow me. I have to follow the proper governors. That way, You'll get the respect of everyone, or nobody can criticize you for anything. I'll give another example at the housing project for our employees. I went to the board and then, then they got, got the approval to, 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 to build the housing uh, the project for our employees in a Mehan area. It's a big project, and everybody got. Uh, and I was not planning on, on, on getting a house because I was not planning on, on living among my employees day and night. <laughs> Exactly, you know, that's it. And then the architect said, oh, mama, listen, you know, he sent me the 3D for a nice house, you know, you know, do this, do that. I said, oh, my mind looks, I said, oh, it's a beautiful, you know, nice spot, take it. I said, I don't know. Then I went to, to my board and said, listen, well, here was what happened. Uh, 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 I'm thinking now to take it. Would you allow me or not? Because I came to you a few months ago and got your approval. I haven't decided yet, but would you allow me to consider it? So much chairman, in person. my advice to you, don't live among your employees. You know, you, you will get headache day at night. And if people uh, 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 don't find you in the office, they come knocking your door at night. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, I invested in it. And I said, you know what, it's an investment for it. So I took the permission first. So it said the government's procedure has to be there. Because in my position, there might be a conflict of interest in every single thing in town. We are a small country, we are a small town. And I made a decision not to make any private business. If I have an extra money, to, 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 I can buy real estate and, uh, or put it in the bank. You know, I don't have much money, but you know, putting them in the bank or, or buying a piece of land is not something bad in the, in the country. However, getting into business, I have to, 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 to be careful in, in uh, 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 ob observing the governance issues and not have a conflict of interest. Sorry, that was our last question. Um, but you'll be around for a little bit longer, so if they had a few questions for you, is that correct? Well, if you want to get a couple of questions, then I'll uh, We are out of time. You guys want to stay a little bit longer? Or? All right, let's do that. Questions? Two, less two questions, and that's why I don't, I'm sorry. I can oh, no. <laughs> You should decide, not me, sorry. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you, Omar, for this uh, nice speech. I would like to ask if you have a plan, and I mean any plans to invest in research and development, especially in universities or in incubators. Uh, if we are looking to the Israeli market, in the Israeli market they are uh, exporting around 40% of their uh, exports are research and development uh, from their uh, exports. Uh, in the Palestinian market we have talents especially in the universities. What they need, they need the research and development, the incubators, the right incubator that care with them and take care with them projects. Are you planning at Paltel to invest in this way? Thank you. Like I said, we're not planning so far to create our own incubators or accelerators. We plan to partner with the existing ones and hoping to create you know, some, some real partnership here. 
Investing in R&D, again, we cannot be so far the owners of R&D. We don't have ideas. No, we only service provider. We we we, we are the, the network that carries the service and deliver, deliver deliver it to you. However, if there are others and we can partner with them to to, to grow their business, that's fine. You know, we we will do that. However, again, it's a business decision. It's not a CSR decision. We will not do this for charity. We'll have to do it for business reasons, and the right idea has to be there. So if someone, if uh, even a university would come and say, listen up, you know, I have uh, 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 the, the service of the SMEs and banks and different institutions in state-of-the-art data center where will be classified international T1, T2, T3, you know, the classification of different data centers in the world. And hopefully we'll be able to give us the state-of-the-art services. So far, the hosting is done through the ISPs, and we're not as the big operators that in Ojawa are staying out of it and living to have a is competing with Colio, with, with uh, 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 Mada and those people for, for the hosting. But once we have uh, 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 a big data center, I think we can present the product in a different way. So we can give you the hosting services with disaster recovery, or maybe with running your IT services, with all these kind of ideas. That hopefully will, will, will become a big... Uh, solution and alternative for you and much cheaper than hosting your website in the US. I hope so, but you know, it, it is as an uh, international practice uh, that interconnection and the hosting is uh, cost-based. Not uh, It is not something that a company try to uh, get profit uh, from it. Uh, you know, uh, the market is from the access to the services. So you interconnect? We're not, we're not in, in this, we're not planning to make our money from the hosting services. I hope so. The, 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 the money is made through connectivity. Yes. I mean, when I, when I come and host the servers of, of a bank in, in, in my data center, which is very hard to convince the banks in Palestine to do it, because they don't trust anyone with their information, but I'm hoping to make money within the connectivity. When I sell them the, the bandwidth and uh, uh, different telecom solutions with that bundle, I'm hoping to make my money through that thing. I'm not talking about the bank, I'm talking about uh, small startups. No, no, no. Uh, uh, as a mainly like SMEs uh, hopefully will be able to uh, justify the business case. You don't want to have an IT department in every single uh, business in Palestine. Small businesses, they cannot afford it, but they need to, to, to have a small server for uh, 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 their uh, different system. However, again, there is a fine line. We don't want to keep to compete with small IT companies. We had an IT company, Halul, that was supposed to, to do quote-unquote miracles in IT. However, we decided to minimize the scope of the business for that company in order not to compete with the existing IT companies in Palestine. So there is always a fine line of being a big operator that is trying to save the country and try, on the other hand not to kill the smaller businesses. So I would like to see the smaller IT companies growing and, and succeeding in, in Palestine. I do, we don't want us as Palestine to be the reason for uh, getting them out of business. So it, it has uh, all of it, it has to work well within the different scheme. Um, so we have a question. How many startups are here? Want to raise your hands? So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine startups. So you guys should reach out to Palto Group. There's ten. Um, so if you have any questions, I believe you'll be around for another few minutes. Um, approach, talk, network. Network also with your peers, get to know each other. But um, I would like to thank you for being our speaker. Uh, we do have a little gift for you. It's an olive wood startup rhyme clap.